Hello and welcome to Jimmy Kimmel Live. As you may have noticed, I'm not him. I saw like six people talking to their neighbor being like, who is that? My name is Will Arnett and I am your guest host here for the night. I'll be filling in while your regular host is away. Just think of me as your depressed, middle-aged substitute teacher who, <laughs> who you definitely saw crying in his car before coming in. <laughs> you may know me from my, net my Netflix show, Flaked. It's the, uh, yeah. <laughs> to those of you who don't, it's the, it's the thumbnail that you scroll past to get to Narcos. <laughs> You may have also uh, seen me in a little show called The Rest of Development. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's funny, people ask me all the time, they, 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 they always come up to me and they say, is The Rest of Development coming back? And I'm always like, Bateman, you're on the show too. <laughs> like, they're gonna, they're gonna call you, you know what I mean? <laughs> Honestly. I should do it. I should make a documentary about how dumb Bateman is. <laughs> I say that in jest. I'm, I'm, I'm here because Jimmy is out on paternity leave. Yeah, and uh, you may, some of you may have seen Jimmy's monologue last night about his newborn son, Billy. Yeah. yeah. Very powerful, full of emotion, and very, is a very, very beautiful tribute. And I just want to offer my best wishes to Jimmy, Molly, Jane, and Billy. We're thinking of you guys sending lots of love. In addition to that, if you'd like to donate to the Children's Hospital LA, which took such great care of Billy, go to the address on your screen and you can make a donation. All right? Great. Great. I'd make a donation, but uh, I, just, I just blew 40 grand on tickets to that Ja Rule. Festival. <laughs> Turn, turns out Jod does not rule. <laughs> so, so <clears throat> Jimmy's taking the week off to spend some time with his family and his new baby, so he asked me to, to come here and take care of his other baby, little Guillermo. <laughs> You're doing good. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, you keep it up. You're doing good. Thank you. How are you feeling? You good? Yeah, I'm, I'm great. Yes. Okay. And, and I have faith you're gonna kill it tonight. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I feel like baby Guillermo's baba is filled with Don Julio. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. I gotta say, I'm not surprised that Jimmy asked me to do this. When you want someone to fill in for you, but you don't want them to be too good, <laughs> I'm your guy. Yeah. He's not gonna hire somebody who could potentially replace him. You know, it's funny, Jimmy, Jimmy had a son, and I dropped everything to come host his show. And when I had my sons, all Jimmy did was send me an edible arrangement. <laughs> yeah. Which... Whatever, it's not a competition, but if it were competition, which it is, we could all clearly agree that, that I'm the better friend, right? Yeah. I mean, come on. It wasn't even a very good arrangement. It was like it was like 40% cantaloupe. <laughs> and the other one, the green one, the honey, honeydew. More like honey don't. I've had a lot of fun here today, though. It's been interesting to get a peek behind the curtain of a show like this. They let me in on a few of their most intimate secrets. For instance, Jimmy Kimmel Live. Not live at all. <laughs> no, in fact, Jimmy had me tape this three babies ago. <laughs> but I gotta say, uh, I gotta say, I am up to this, I'm excited. You know, we're lucky to even have a show tonight because there was a chance that the writers were gonna go on strike. Yeah. But fortunately, a deal was made last night and they were able to go to work today. So that's good, yeah. We're happy about that. Yeah. Yeah, the negotiations between the Writers Guild and the Alliance of Motion Picture Television Producers, they were very tense. And if a deal wasn't reached, the writers were prepared to, to march outside all the major studios here and they would have, they would have faced their greatest enemy, the sun. <laughs> Yeah. 
I gotta say, I feel like I could have brokered a deal between them and the son. I, the son and I are very good friends. <laughs> and if you're at home watching this, this is real, so don't adjust your set. <laughs> Never once break 10. Never once. Uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's great that we were able to avoid a strike. If the strike had happened, I'd be stuck coming here and, you know, coming up with my own words, which would have been, you know... <laughs> ungood or... Hey, uh, I saw a pretty funny story online that I wanted to show you guys. Something strange, very strange happened in Waynesboro, Virginia. Two-year-old Tiger Lily, she's one of the cats who fell victim to an odd incident on Maple Avenue in Waynesboro. Someone's been shaving cats' underbellies. Tiger Lily's owner says it's happened to this rescue kitty twice this year, and she's not alone. Neighbors posted signs after police got seven similar reports. It hurts. Because I don't know, she can't tell me if it, like, I know it probably hurt her, but not, like, physically, but, like, mentally, that has to be really hard on her, and so knowing that she can't tell me about it. Wow. That is... You know, when I was younger, I used to get paid to shave people's put... Oh, wow, forget it. I mean, if, if, if the president can say it, so can I, right? I mean, come on. I'm just... The president. Speaking of the president, President Trump had a really big day. He spoke on the phone with Vladimir Putin today. They talked about Syria, and they talked about the Airbnb they're going to share in Martha's Vineyard together, <laughs> which is nice. That's lovely. It's a pretty long call, although most of that was just them going, no, you hang up. No, you hang up. <laughs> no, yet, yet you hang up. <laughs> We think they're in love. Oh, yeah. Trump and Putin, we think they might be in love, Guillermo. Yeah, I think they are. Uh, <laughs> President Trump also did an interview on Fox News yesterday that was just especially Trumpy. Let's take a look. The one mistake I made with the health care, you know, we have one plan that's been going through. It's been getting better and better and better. And somebody was saying, oh, the people that voted for Trump aren't getting good. They're going to get the greatest. These are the greatest people. You're either going to have a great plan or I'm not signing it. And I've said from day one, the best thing I can do is let Obamacare die and then come in with a plan. But it's not fair to the people. So, you know, it's going to be very good. I, I don't want to set deadlines. I think it's going to be approved. It could be soon, but it could be not so soon. It's going to happen. What? What? Oh, man, finally, a president who definitely, maybe, commits to something or not. <laughs> that... I mean, that is, that's like, that's world-class meandering. Now, you, you may have missed this, but buried in this clip, there's, there's something really historic. I'm serious. Can we put a two-shot back of them up there? Look at this. That right there, that's the closest that we're going to get to knowing what Trump looks like when he's tweeting on the toilet at 6 a.m. <laughs> Doesn't that look like he's sitting on the john? And I just, and I just wish that, sad. <laughs> Don't imagine him in a robe. It's an awful, you'll never recover. <laughs> By the way, I, I, I have a theory. All this stuff with Trump, the angry tweets and the yelling, there's a reason for all this. He's not getting laid. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Think about it. His wife lives in another state, locked away in a tower like Trumpunzel. <laughs> He's lonely. There's only one solution. The military needs to dispatch the Access Hollywood bus immediately for all of our sakes. There. There you go. I just saved, us. I just saved America. You're welcome. This is a pretty great one. And this is a pretty one. This made me laugh. There's a, a story from an ABC affiliate in New Orleans about what may be the best slash worst tattoo I've ever seen you decide. Real, real, real big fan of Law and Order SVU. Uh, SVU specifically, I never go a day without watching it. When Bernard Johnson takes off his shirt, his tattoo reads, executive producer Dick Wolf, which can be seen in the show's credits. I was with my tattoo artist, and uh, we were just talking about my next tattoo, and uh, we were talking about uh, Law & Order SVU, and one thing led to another, and got this tattoo. Wow. <laughs> Law & Order SV, what's wrong with you? 
But imagine, imagine if it didn't say executive producer, because otherwise it would just be kind of more like a description. <laughs> like, like your butt is a wolf that eats dick or something. <laughs> it's a dick wolf. Oh, that there, that's a dick wolf. Congrats, man, where do I sign up for that? How am I doing so far? Am I doing all right? Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. If you like that, click the subscribe button below, and good things will happen forever.